You're welcome yet again to an amazing month of May where we're going to share very interesting stuff about business. For the guys who are watching us at home, you're very welcome. I thank you for joining us as always. We know some of you are in your beds, others are in location, uh, 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 worship office locations, others in hosting centers. You are very, very welcome. Thank you for joining us. And this morning, let's put our hands together, friends. For someone who needs no introduction to you, the father of this house, a business coach, an amazing leader, Apostle Moses, you're very welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Chris. It's a great honor to be back here for Business Garage. And I would like to tell the sound team to give you some monitor sound so that you don't shout at the saints. Wow. Thank you so much. It's so, it's really, it's so good to be here and to share this month of May, sharing some business fundamentals. And, and yeah, I would like to welcome those who are joining us online. I think we have people in so many places, at least 20 other locations. We also have a great contingent of people, leaders from Worship Avis Bugolobi in the house this morning. I would like to recognize uh, the anointing upon their lives and to welcome them very much. Thank you so much, the team from Bugolobi. That's so warm to see you. I think the, the business leaders from Naria can pick a leaf wow. yes. uh, and be in the house this month as we do this. Let, let's the Bugolobi people take over business garage. Uh, <laughs> Because their pastor already leads the worship now, yeah. Because I'm seeing more people from Bogolobi than Nalia. So if you have, if you do any working. kind of business, and you're from Worship Harvest Nalia, I'm throwing you hasten, this challenge hasten. to be here in person on Sundays at 7:30. Because there are some things that you can only catch when you're in the place, yeah. uh, and not just hearing from from a distance. We also have the business lounge. Yeah. You know, some people have never been to the business lounge at an airport. So this is your opportunity. <laughs> your opportunity. <laughs> Assume you are at the airport. To go to a business lounge and meet with people who, who are just going to blow your mind. I mean, I, I see Grace Munira. He started yeah. the, the... Yeah, I anyway, know, he started this business started, school. Yes. <laughs> We've been on his case and we are glad that he has started. Too much wisdom. We also have Pastor Pato, all the way from the double mega multi permissional church, Vive Church in the house. Yeah. So there's too much going on here for you to be in your it's bed. Special month, yeah? Yeah, it's a special yeah. month, this one. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, Apostle, just kindly share with us. Uh, what you have for us this month of May before we dive into today's uh, topic. So I tricked you, sort of, uh, and had you do the interview today. Uh, it's usually Pastor B3, and uh, she couldn't be here this morning. For real, she couldn't be here. But when I found out it was you, I was like, yeah, it, we could as well do this. So what happens is that well, I'm very passionate about business because I think that business is one of the most underestimated transformative agents in the world. All the countries that we call first world countries did not be where there's a lot of development and people have a much higher uh, way, what's the word? Level of living. There is a more standard of living. It did not happen because of any other reason, uh, mountain of influence apart from business. Yes. It didn't happen because of governments. No. America is not where it is because of the American not government. At all. Yeah. Europe is not where it is because of European governments. Every country where people have been lifted from one standard of living to the next, it has been because of business. Yes. So if anyone cares about transformation of society, including our nation, you can't say you care about it, but you don't care about business, because it means you don't know what you're talking about. Yes. So the real ticket to elevating people's lives 
is businesses that work. That's how those countries have become what they have become. It's not through politics, what, okay, all those things are necessary to make the society work so that people can do business. But at the end of the day, it is the business that lifts people out of poverty. Yes, yes. So that's why we are passionate about business. So because I like to put my money where my mouth is, <laughs> in spite of all the other things I have to do, uh, I started a, a business. <laughs> and our business is called Momentum Leadership Group. It's about helping uh, leaders and teams win. And so we do that through training, through coaching, through speaking engagements and other things where we can inspire people. And just strategy, helping people think through what they are doing. I think God has blessed us with the capacity to do that. Yeah. I know that one of the very kind saints in the house is going to switch off one of those fans that are making us feel colder than we should mm -hmm. on this cold morning. <clears throat> so we start Momentum Leadership. This. Oh, they decided to switch all of them off so that we real warm up. My God. So when we started Momentum Leadership Group, we've been doing many things over the years, and that happened after joining the John Maxwell team. And uh, one, of, one of the things that I think God has gifted me with is creating spaces in which learning can take place. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do different things. We, because I'm not alone, we are many, a few coaches now in Momentum Leadership Group. But I really longed to create a space where sparks are flying, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you put a few people in a room and, and then you sort of instigate, yeah. I'm an instigator. You ask a bad poke. question that annoys everyone. It's called poking. Yeah, you poke and then, and then people start speaking yes. and things start happening and people come back with bigger results than when they were there the, the last time. So, so I, 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 we tried one last year. It sort of worked, but not really well. So uh, I'm also quite determined. So I said, we are going to try again. Meanwhile, people are paying. <laughs> so we said, okay, business group coaching is back. So we started again. And uh, we sort of had a framework, but it wasn't very, very yeah, it wasn't structured. very organized. It wasn't very structured. We knew that if someone can do this, this, that, they will elevate we'll their it, business. Yeah. But how do you move them through the process without them feeling like you're dragging them along? So, so we started. It's, it's supposed to be a five, five sessions, once a month, lots of action. So we did the first one. Uh, one, two, three, because we have three groups. And I was sort of almost happy, but not too happy. And then something happened. Say something happened. Something happened. And now you probably don't know the thing that happened. No clue. But you're involved in it. Hey! Hey! hey. That's why I'm telling people, you have to be in the room. Mm. You see, Patricia Ogwa, who is one of our mission or community leaders, and she also runs a business uh, helping you know, businesses organize their finances and management, sent me a text that had revelation that had me almost crawling on the floor. Uh -huh. She said that Isaac intended to bless Esau, not Jacob. Yes. So even when Isaac was praying and laying hands, in his mind he was blessing who? Esau. Esau. In fact, for him, he knew he was blessing Esau. In fact, if he mentioned any names, he mentioned Esau's name. Yeah. I bless you, Esau. <laughs> but that person in the room, <laughs> hey! the person in the room was Jacob. Hey! So in spite of the fact that the man was blessing Esau, wow. who was out still looking for the, stuff, for the meat, the, the person, person who, who took received. the blessing... The physical. person who received the impartation was not the person who was intended to receive the impartation. Mm. It was the person who was in physically present. 
Wow. Think about that. Wow. You have, you have understood. Those Please online, you have presence. understood. Yeah. Presence is a ministry. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't the person that he wanted to bless. It was instead the person that was there. Even when he used the other person's name, it was the person who, who was there who received the blessing. Wow. You see, people are, are finding it so slow in life because they don't know principles that work to accelerate you. Mm. Yeah, so I'm going to share a very foundational principle right now and why I'm here and why I have a system that works that even the people I'm coaching are enjoying. They come back yeah. with results. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Enjoying. Now, let me tell you what happened. Mm. So, after that first round of, co of, of coaching, uh, you and I took a road trip to Hoima. Yes. To see some land which we had bought together. Yes. By the way, Hoima is where the oil is going to be processed. So if you haven't bought land in Hoima, you are like in a cave. Okay, so get out of under your cave. There's a whole airport being built. International airport. Yeah. It's a whole new city developing. And people are here in Kampala. Uh, when things are happening elsewhere. Uh, we have Mr. Daniel Ajena in the house. He's a great surveyor. He can help you. So... As we talked, mm. driving, uh -huh. hmm? talking, just talking. Mm. You remember? Yeah, I remember. We were remember, chatting. Yeah, we yeah. talked about your family. We talked mm. about my family. We talked about business. Mm. Guess what? What? By the time I came back, the Holy Spirit had downloaded the whole co group coaching system into my spirit wow. completely. And do you know why? Because I was hanging with you. I'm, I'm telling you and he doesn't know it wow. but I've already shared this with the people in the groups they know it was hanging with you because you have been running business for such a long time you have systems that work at one time you all literally lived in another country while your business was working in this country so there is something in you that wow. all I ever needed to do was was be in the same car with you for six hours and I got it yeah that's where this thing came from it's right here thank you for coming <laughs> the interviewer has become the interviewee let me tell you friends whatever wow. you're looking for someone has it already someone has it already now you may find that between you and I, you you are the practitioner. Yeah. I am the teacher. Yes. You get what I'm saying? True. The teacher wants to teach people. The teacher wants to help people. Yeah. But the teacher does not have the anointing that the practitioner has. And what the teacher needed to do is stay close to the practitioner and wow. get something from the practitioner that then the teacher can put in words that can help others that the practitioner actually himself doesn't know how to put in words that yes. are like this True. so it's a symbiosis yes. wow wow yeah maybe wow. we'll take questions <laughs> <laughs> so that's that hoima road that hoima trip that, was it a Saturday or was it a public holiday? One of it was it's something. Saturday. Is where this thing came from. Wow. So I, I managed to distill down mm -hmm. our group coaching program into five sessions because it was supposed to be five sessions. Then we already remember done the first session. So we had to restart. Mm -hmm. People had to do session, <laughs> sort of session one again. Resetting. Yeah. And so we, because there are so many things to talk about in leadership, you yeah. can't finish yes. in five sessions. But we said, what would be the five most critical areas where you don't just talk, but if you go and practice, something will happen. Session one is about the leader. Okay. In our first session, the focus is the leader. 
Because everything rises and falls on leadership. leadership. Yeah. So we try to help leaders understand, first of all, the morality of business. Most business leaders are guilty of what they are doing. True. <laughs> yeah, seriously. They, they all wish they could be pastors. They think and that's a higher calling. Yes. Also, because when people think of business, they rarely think of solutions. They think of money. Yeah. So, so the morality is almost killed out of the picture. Because of the money part. But, mm. but you must make the money. If you don't make profit, you can't stay in business. Yeah. So in order for you to stay in business and help more people, you must make profit. Mm. But you must understand that business is, is good, is yes. godly, is moral. Abraham, our father, was a businessman. He wasn't a pastor. Okay. Point noted. You can say that again. <laughs> so we want to help leaders understand that what they do is good and moral and godly. And that we are depending on them to lift this continent out of this abysmal state. Yeah. It's not going to be anyone else. It's going to be business people. Look, all of history proves that it's businesses. It's nothing else. Change the economy. Yeah, yeah Solomon Improved made gold and silver as stones in Jerusalem. How? By doing business. People think that God spoke to Solomon and gave him wisdom and then Solomon sat in his palace and said, wow, how wise I am. And then gold and the economy changed. No, Solomon was a businessman. He traded with Egypt. He was an international business yes. person. He wasn't just a king. He was an international businessman. So helping the leader, the first, that's the first thing. Creating clarity, writing the vision the history of the business, the purpose, the strategy, the values. Okay, and we read the book, Thou Shalt Prosper by Daniel Lapin. Then the second session is about the product and marketing. Because most people, the mistake they make is to think that if you have a product, we'll you have a business. Safe. You don't! Mm. Yeah. The only thing that qualifies you to have a business is to have a market, not a product. The product is not the business. The market is the business. And it doesn't matter how nice the product is. No. Look, you're going to bake a thousand loaves of bread and then they are going to rot in your kitchen. <laughs> is, does that make you a business person just no. because you know how to bake? Not at all. No. What no. makes you a business person is first finding a thousand people who want to eat a loaf of bread every day. And once you have found them and interested them, then you go and start baking. You don't start by baking. So most people don't understand that. That's why we run with small things that... But it's market first. When the church was born in the book of Acts, the first thing they did after the Holy Spirit came down, which is the vision of the business, mm. is evangelism. evangelism. Yeah. yeah. They didn't start by women's ministry, men's ministry, <laughs> uh, feeding, discipleship. What <laughs> It was ministry. evangelism, yeah. which is marketing. Yeah. Market. yeah. That's why the church grew in the book of Acts and that's why the churches of today don't grow because they do everything else apart from evangelism. Apostle. Yes. To go back, is, the first one was apostleship, leadership, isn't it? Yes. Then marketing. Yes. Uh -huh. Evangelism. Mm. Are, are there people? <laughs> yeah. Maybe some people are even commenting online. We'll check them out later. But so we deal with that yeah we deal with the, I, this business of you're polite your mother told you don't make a big deal of yourself but all that nonsense doesn't work if you're going to succeed you must have a marketing budget you must have a marketing strategy you must have a marketing system it's marketing that makes the business nothing else initially yes now when you think about it <clears throat> Here in Nalia, where we are, there is a market, right? Yeah. Across. Uh, across the road. Uh, where the, the people in the market there, do you think they have a business? Yes. Yes, they do. Why? Because they yeah. are positioned in, in the market. market. The, the reason that the woman has thing. a business is her store is in the market, not in the garden where the maize comes from. Oh. Wow. 
The people with the business is the ones whose stall is in the market, not in the garden where the, the matoke comes yes. from. Having matoke doesn't give you a business. No. Having a stall in the market is what gives you a business. Okay. Wow. I will not belabor the point any further. Wow. Do you want us to continue? Please, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah, you know, wisdom is the principal thing. The third thing is systems and processes. Oh, marketing, we read the one page marketing plan by Alan Deep. Yeah. You are the one who introduced me to that book, right? Yes. Yes. You see, I tell you that. Maybe that's why I'm your friend. <laughs> I don't know whether you are my also friend, me. but me, I'm me, your I'm friend. Your best friend, I yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, how you need to find are. people who you. Uh, <laughs> and ever since Grace Munira came to our what? Uh, he's also our best friend. To our business coaching uh, thing, and and completely disorganized us. Mm. He's now also our best friend. Yeah. He may yeah. not know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't even need to know. And he doesn't even need to know. But between me and I, we know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, God, God brings people in your life, yeah. and you have to recognize that mm. hey, this is a God thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Third point uh -huh. is systems and processes. Okay. So the book there. The book is the E Myth Revisited by Mike Gaba. Yeah. And it's about the fact that, you know. Let, let me. How do I put it? This is to help you prepare your business for your ultimate customer. Mm -hmm. Your ultimate customer is the person who will eventually buy your business. Come again? Your ultimate customer is the person who will eventually buy your business. Just how and why? You see, if you don't, if you set up your business to sell it, you will always succeed whether you sell it or not. Mm. If you don't set up your business to sell it, and you set it up to work in it, basically you created a business, create a job for yourself. Self, yes. It's a matter of when, not if it will, it will fail. fail yeah. Its failure is guaranteed. Wow. It's not even, it might fail. No, 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 no. It will fail. It will fail. Take it from me. It will fail. It's a matter of if, not when, not if it will fail. A anyone who sets up a business to work in it, you created a job for yourself, that business will fail. Yeah. yeah. I was tempted to ask you why, but we will wait for the day. Yeah, we'll, we are going to be going through all of this. So, the, and yet, when you set up a business to sell it, it that business that. will succeed. Yeah. Whether you sell it or, you or not. Because you'll get out of the way. Yes. You'll always be working yourself out of the job in the business. Making yourself irrelevant. Yeah. So that the business can run. So, wow, systems powerful. and processes. The okay. fourth session is about people. People are an organization's most appreciable asset. We read the book, Winning, by Jack Welch you find that most businesses employ people who waste time at, at, in the business. They just have bodies, not real people. Mm. And that's actually a problem in Uganda. So that Ugandan businesses have been forced to, to outsource management positions to people from enough. two other countries that I will not name, but they start with the letter <laughs> of the alphabet. Dear. Yeah, people here don't want oh, to dear. hear what I'm saying. I think <laughs> you can sense it in the quietness. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, people just go to work to live their social life there at work and get a check at the end of the month yeah. not to work. And so, wow. if you're a business leader and you don't know how to get the best out of your team, how to get them to actually work, they will come do all the social media work at your workplace. Download the movies. Download the movies, watch them, and I don't know whatever else. <laughs> so we try and help oh, leaders dear. eliminate all of that. Mm. Say, look, you can't win. We can't transform this continent when we, we basically bring to work what we do at home. That's why people carry extra work home, because while they were at work, they, they were, were not working. Things. 
They were doing home things at work, and now the day is over, the work is not done, so they have to take it home. This is business garage. PPF, PPF, PPF. Mm. So, Dave Ramsey says, if you do three things, okay. three things only, you will be immediately in the top 5% of workers at your, wherever you, you're employed. Okay. One, show up on time. Show up on time. Yeah. Smile. And then, do the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Do the work while at work. Mm. Just three things. Simplified. Yeah. Show up on time and then smile. Have a good attitude the whole time. Smile. <clears throat> yeah. And focus on More, the average person doesn't smile. And that's why businesses don't work. Because people, customers like to talk to people who <laughs> smile. So show up on time, smile, and do the, the work while at work. Mm. Don't do other things while at work. Do the work. Mm. You are going to be in the top 5%. If you'll be headhunted everywhere. We are wow. running out of time. The last wow. one is the money. Mm. Yeah. The money. Cash flow. Taxes. Mm. Budgets. Mm. Yeah. Grace introduced us to a very interesting book called Profit First. Mm. Oh my God, that book. Mm. <laughs> you think what have been people doing all along? Like, how could we be so dumb? To the to, money, yeah. the money. If you don't make profit, you will not stay in the business, however well meaning you are. Yeah. So, you must make profit, and we help you see how to do that. Those are the five areas. And if we can talk about today's yes. focus, area. kindly tell us why the fuss about the leader. Just give us some insights there on that first uh, major topic. <sighs> the leader, the, the, the reason we start by focusing on the leader is because the leader carries the vision. You know, people talk of vision, vision. Oh, there's a vision. The business has it. Where did the vision come from? The vision comes from the leader. And when the leader sees small, the business will be small, small and everyone associated with it has already signed up their lives to be small first stop there when the leader sees small yeah the business is definitely going to stay small, small and so is everyone in it trapped in the smallness exactly wow yeah so basically the day they applied for a job in your organization they shrunk they they, they entered a curse literally <laughs> Yeah. Because now wow. the, the, the limitations on their life has been already defined. Wow. Yeah. Especially if they decide to stay and serve you. That's it. Hey. Their only ticket is that leaving. Person. It's leaving. John Maxwell talks about the law of the lead in his book, The 21 Future Laws of Leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a lead, there is a limit. Whatever you lead, it will come up, rise up to where you are, and it will never Stops. go up. If it dares go above it, it will soon come back to your level. Wow. Yeah. Nothing can go beyond the leader's capacity to dream and think. You see, you behave differently based on your vision. That's why the Bible says that without vision, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. That's Proverbs 29, 18. Yeah. They cast off restraint. Because I'm trying to plant a thousand churches, I live very differently from a person who wants to have 50 people in a room and they, they are like, I can now die. Mm. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, you, you live you very differently. You just can't operate. Yeah. The way you think, the people you hang out with, the, the levels of hard work. The things you do, the, the books things you, you read. Do, the sacrifices you make, the yes. books you read. The everything you make. responds to your level of vision. Wow. So that's why we have to deal with the leadership question. Mm. Yeah, because when a leader has a small vision, everything stays small. So, then on that same point there, yeah. what, okay, I know you're going to probably lead us into that, but that's a very critical thing that 
the person's mind has to shift. There has to be a total yep. mindset yep. change. Yep. And for them to start seeing that way. Does that come from exposure? Does it come from the heart? It comes from so many different things because no one is born with a vision. Mm. Yeah, no one came out of their mother's womb screaming, I, a thousand I see the world. <laughs> I see the world. I see a billion dollars. I see a thousand. No, yeah, everyone came out screaming other things. Mm. Yeah, just shocked that they have arrived here. <laughs> Where am I? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So most people, that, that's that's the yeah. basic. That's basic human living. Yeah. Just a screaming <laughs> uh, and, and, and wondering what's going on. Yeah, that's basic. If you're wondering what's going on, you're human. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We all have that. But then how do you start to lift yourself from, from that basic mm. survival level? Because that's animal level. Yeah. Even animals know how to survive. Wow. Yeah, animals know how to hunt and get what they need to eat to the next day. Animals don't set up farms. Whoa. Yeah. Apostle. Yeah, cows know they need grass, but they don't set up farms for grass. You know, lions know they need <laughs> lions know they need meat, but they don't set up farms of the animals that they need to eat, so that they always have meat to eat. So it's not dramatic. Eh? It's, it's not, not dramatic. dramatic. So that's animal level of wow. eh, see it, need it, get it. Mm. Yeah, that that's so that's the basic animal level of human living. Until you lift yourself off that level and start having vision. And saying, I can't just be contained by nature. There is more in me that can happen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So what can I do? What, what can what, you what do? What can a leader do to change that? Whew. Are you enjoying this, guys? Yeah. Meanwhile, please share the link. Share the link. Share the link. Share the link to tell every business person you know. Because these are very critical, these are very important fundamentals of business people. Yeah. So and, even and those who want to start, please yeah. share the link right away. It's good to start off on the right. Like, yeah. Well, so in the next five, okay, this being week one, in the next other four Sundays, we are going to be continuing. So you can come, join us. We'll have coffee at the back after, at the business lounge. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. The Harvest Business right. Lounge. Okay. What do we do? What do we do? How do you see more before? I think John Maxwell mm -hmm. talks about seeing more before. You see, you can see more at 80. <laughs> yeah, too late. Or you can see more earlier. If you can see more earlier, you have more time to actualize what you're seeing. If you are those who eventually the light bulb goes off at 65, hey. you're supposed to be retiring. But how do you see more you before one? Yeah. You just, yeah. the one is cliche, but I will give it still. Pray for more. Yeah. Start by asking God, Lord, show me. Show me why I'm here. Show me why my business exists. Surely there must be more. Yeah. Yeah. What else is there? Show me. Teach me. Talk to me. And when you pray for more, then God starts moving things. He starts bringing you people. He starts taking you to spaces where you start seeing differently. Anyway, so one is pray for more. Two, get around the right people. Yeah, come to business garage. Mm, yeah. Yeah. He who, the Bible says that he who, what? walks with wise men will he himself become wise get around the right people yeah. you see what i'm saying yeah. Yeah, because goes. you don't know what you don't know yeah. it's right there <laughs> he who walks with the wise men will be wise but the companion of fools will be destroyed, destroyed. Yeah, that's a truth that's the scripture. So you decide which side of that scripture you're going to fulfill. Because all scripture must be fulfilled. The wise men or the fools. Yeah. So you just get around the right people. You just realize how small you've been thinking. Mm. True. Yeah, when you get around the right people. Yes. Because most people start their businesses with a vision of 
FMF, feed my family. Then you get around people who already went past feeding their family. They, they, are, they are now nations. thinking about nations. Get around the right people. Wherever you do, get around the right people. Because the right people will challenge your thinking. Yeah. I told you, I got this by riding with you in the car. And I also spent quite a bit of time with you. But it's, it, you know, everything I teach, I've learned it from someone else. Yeah. My role is to just collect, collect eh, this idea, okay, write it down, eh, eh. Then I start teaching others and they think, eh, eh. This, where does he get this stuff? No, from others that you're not listening to. Wow. The egos. Yeah. Look for the egos and hang with them. Mm -hmm. How yeah. else do you see more before? Travel. Travel. Get out there. Look, even if they describe to you how Dubai looks like. <laughs> when you're from Charlie Wajala, <laughs> <laughs> You'll use your imagination of the big building. Uh, you know when they say the buildings are big? You see the, You'll be uh, like, mode. okay, yeah. You use the one that is in your locality. And then you say, I think even those ends, they are like that. Uh, no. Wow. Go see the world. Get a passport. <laughs> Start from there. Yeah, get a COVID mm. test. <laughs> and go. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know, in... in uh, School of Practical, Practical Business. Business. We are yeah. supposed to travel, right? We are traveling. We are traveling. Yeah. We the what? We the what? We are traveling mm. because we value our minds more than our bodies. We are traveling. So travel. Go see places. Even here in Uganda, by the way. Mm. Yeah. Just walk around. Go. Go. See, go to. Uh, yeah. Experience mm. cannot be taught. It can only be experienced. Wow. Yeah, so four. Read. 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 I think Grace Munira must give us a list of all read. the books to read to become a better business person. <laughs> He's because, going to post them after here. Yeah. He always he, he always has like two about just about everything. <laughs> so read. Yeah. There are books out there, my friend. Built to sell. Profit yeah. fast. The one page marketing plan. Scaling up. Scaling up yeah. Yeah, books. Read. Yeah. There are people who have already done this thing and they've done it well. Yeah. Don't think you're the first. Don't reinvent the wheel. Start reading. If you really care about business, read business books. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what else do you do? Get mentors and coaches. There's no one who plays at a certain level in any field, be it sports, arts, music, what, who doesn't have a coach. Yeah, true. Yeah. And your coach doesn't have to be better than you. They just need to know, know what, to, what, how to, what to ask you. Yeah. yeah. They ask the right questions. Yeah. Messi's coach doesn't play better than him. <laughs> but Messi can't play that way without the coach. Yeah. Mm. So get coaches and mentors the difference is coaches ask you questions you ask mentors questions mentors are ahead of you in the game when you go to see them don't go to discuss the weather and the football and the politics no go with your no, list please. of questions always have a list of 10 very good questions you're before going to you ask mix. a mentor before you go before a mentor yeah. never go before a mentor unprepared because next time you'll wonder why they are not picking your phone <laughs> And why they are not giving you an appointment? Because you wasted their time. Mentors don't have time. They yeah. are busy people. They want to know that when they invest in you, they will see return. But guess what? They are all very eager to invest in people. Yes, that's true. Yeah, in straightforward financial true. growth, one of the exercises we give is you must hang out with an ego. Someone you go find someone who has made it financially and spend an evening at lunch at breakfast with them and you have to send a selfie to prove that you did it yeah. and almost 100 percent of them they say they gave me their number and said we should do this more often, more often maybe monthly yeah. 
You see what I'm saying? They are willing, but They're we are willing. not. That's so true. We, we don't know, but we are not willing to go to them to get the knowledge they have. That's why we are stuck. When we go, when chit chat. Yeah, we, when we go, we think we have gone for them to teach us things. Mm. So he sits there. Uh huh. So it's I'm going to see a mentor. Mm. Hey. Mm. Hey. Amen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's called, isn't it? Yeah. How did you start? Yeah. How did you start? Tell me your story. Those are user. <laughs> Tell you your story. I said, how much time do you have? Those ones you can get from all the blogs they write about them. Wow. Have really good questions. Mm. Questions like, if, if you could, if, if, if you could recommend three to five books, books that you read. think I must read, yeah. which ones are they? Then they tell you, read this, read that, read it. And then you go and read them. And come back with a report. Yeah. Next time you go, you tell them, I read this book, this is what I'm doing this about it. Done. Yeah. Ask questions like, is there anyone in your sack of influence that you think I should meet and can you help me meet them? Meet them? Then they will think, I say, yeah, based on what you're doing, I think there's this other guy, he does what you do. I have his number, I can link you up. Yeah. Those are the kind of questions you ask mentors. Yeah. You don't go and ask them, tell me your life, do you have children? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You can ask them questions like, in this current season, what are you dreaming? Yeah. What are you working on right now? Because they're always working on new things. Yeah. What are you dreaming? What are you working on? What do you see the trends, the economy? What yeah. should I do? You know? yeah. And then you ask them if they know about your business. You tell them, of course, what you don't say. If you are in my shoes and I'm facing this kind of, what would you do? Okay. Among other things. Yeah. That was the fifth. Sixth, embrace and practice thinking time. Yeah. If you're going to be a good business leader, you can not only work in your business, you must work on your business. To work on your business, you must set aside time to work on your business. Where you sit down with a cup of coffee and a notebook and a pen and you put that phone aside and you start adopting new thoughts and strategies. Where are we going? What must happen? No one else can do that for you as the leader. You can't outsource that. And then lastly, get a team. Get a team. As long as you work alone, you're not a legit business. Get it. Be responsible for people's Own salaries. Yeah. Because if you don't have a team, it means that you're, you're always going to work in the business. Yeah. Once you get a team and you start bringing others on board, then you realize this thing is bigger than me. Mm. We have to succeed. Yeah. The other person must feed their family. And it's my responsibility. Sure so that's how, that's how you move forward. Our time is over. Wow. But thanks so much. Ladies for, and gentlemen, let's appreciate Apostle. Thank you so much again. And, and friends, like we said, this is going to be the whole month of May. So we encourage you, first of all, share this link. Go and watch this thing. Go and watch this session. Watch it over and over again. And invite people. Physical presence is very important. Yeah, so thank you so much, Apostle Mose. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's again celebrate Apostle. And friends, uh, we always want to, want to give an opportunity uh, if you're out there you might be at your home or here present and you've not given your life to Christ we'd like to give you this opportunity uh, to give your life to Christ because what he's promised us is greater than what we can ever think or imagine yeah? so I'd like us to pray for you if you're there at home or here just close your eyes and we pray together uh, Father we thank you for the people out there we know that uh, you've given them a wholesome life. You've given them a wholesome life, but right now they're going to accept you as their Lord and Savior. So pray this prayer with me. Uh, I would like to give my life to Christ, to you, Lord, as my Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something significant with it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you say that prayer, there's a number on your screen. Uh, dial that number and there's a pastor at the end of that line 0775 642 449 
uh, someone's waiting to pray with you and take you to the next step of what you can do after giving your life to Christ. Thank you so much, and you're welcome to come again next Sunday. Thank you again, Apostle Mose, for joining us today. Have a lovely Sunday.